were fishing in the Snake River for white sturgeon. We fished there two days and we caught quite a few and had a lot of fun. I'm showing you how I do it. There's a lot of underwater current here. We're using the camera, underwater camera. Most of this is underwater. This is how I've set this up. We have weights on it. This is a pull tube. This is a sink, how I showed how I float it to try and keep it straight. My hummingbird. 360, you can see the, the anchors, the weight, the hooks, the swivels. This is the Dacron we use for leader, 100 pound. These are peg weights that we use to make our weight float. You'll see this is the bait we use. This is what we tie the bait on the hook with. And we're just taking it easy. This is the setup that we're going to show the first day. We just cast it out. This is the underwater camera. I made a video a few weeks ago showing different bottoms. Now this is my favorite place to fish for sturgeon, but it is really a soft bottom. Right here you can see, you can't even see where my weight's at, and it's floating. Everything's covered up. The line, the camera, and the weight are dragging. I put the weight, it's a six ounce weight, in front of the, or in back of the camera. You can see how soft this is. So here's our first sturgeon. Okay, 40 minutes later, we're casting out again. Same setup. That slider that's on there, there's, I just left it on. It's a holder for the weight and I after everything hits it takes a while to settle and you can see the trail that our line made this one here now you can see the float that's a peg float it's about four inches away from the hook and our bait you can see that little ditch that our line has made in our camera. It's really weird the way that this is so soft it just kind of falls down. If you didn't have an underwater camera, you wouldn't know that there's a bottom like this. That's why I like to use some way to make my hook float with the bait on it. There's other ways to do it, but this is one.
And I have it float on my camera so it keeps it up two or three inches so we can see a little bit better. If I didn't have that float on the camera, you wouldn't be able to see this. The camera would be completely covered. There's a lot of big perch in here. Sometimes on my camera I've seen where that bait was covered up by this stuff. And their perch will come along and dig it out. Which sometimes is a good thing because the sturgeon may not see it. But the perch seem to get it out of the... The herring I use for bait is kind of slid down. I like to keep it a little bit higher because we miss a lot of sturgeon. They'll take that bait inside their mouth and that hook, if it doesn't hook when they take it in, then we won't catch it. We anchor our boat in the river and sometimes the boat will move and cause that line on our weight to move. Here comes a sturgeon. We missed him. You can see he didn't even notice that float that's up there. We missed him again. Watching these videos and see the ones you miss really hurts. Cause it is a lot of fun when you hook in to one of those big sturgeons. This time, he just passes it over. Right. This is another camera, Margie. Right here. Remember, open it up. Oh. oh. That's mine. Oh, don't come over here, you suffer. Here we you have go. a double. You open the door, Margie. Open the door. You got a tangle. We get our lanes all tangled. Both of these fish came out of the water and got us all tangled. That's not, not, oh shit, I need both of these. Just remember. Popped right out right there. Probably got on them lines and broke him off, huh? Yep, busted it right off. Okay, I'm gonna, here, let me hand you this pole. That's a big fish. That's something. A double. They're all on that side. We might not be able to get the same setup, Joe, we get on that one. Yeah, no kidding. That's, That's a lousy reel. That was our floater, wasn't it? Uh, well, you got 
It's going to be a wobbly. You'll have to edit this one, Bob. I'll let, I'll let him read that. He might be coming up. So. Yeah, he's right here below us. He's right underneath us now. Ah, oh, he's trying to pull me in right now. <laughs> he must be a pretty good size one, huh? Oh, I think he's about five feet, don't you? Five or six, maybe? He's, he's giving me plenty of tussle, I'll tell you that. There he is. Yeah, he's six feet. Hey, don't go under the boat. Oh. Now you're just going to have to go on the other side. Maybe you can bring, you know, he's coming back. There he is. Come on, Goofy. Yeah. Didn't like that, did he? Saw the boat on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly! Thought maybe he was coming up there for a minute. Oh, he's. Don't want to play. Where's your phone at? Here he comes. Cindy's phone. It's in my pocket. Okay, Looks we'll get like him up and be done. Yeah, he's done. There he comes. Get him over to me. You get him? Not yet. No, not yet. I need to get him a little closer. You want loose line now? No. I gotta get his mouth here. Gotta find his mouth. Okay, this is the next day. We got a different setup. We've cast it out. If you look real close, you can see it. It's over left of the line. We make a float and glue it right to the hook. And then we put our sturgeon on it. I mean, not our sturgeon, our sturgeon bait, which here we're using pickled herring that we buy out of the store. The second day, we didn't do as good. We only caught...
And the second day, we only caught three sturgeons. The first day, we only got to fish about five hours because the wind came up. But we caught seven or eight, can't remember. And then all the ones we missed. Here comes another one. We missed him. I have a lot more videos and more sturgeons, but this is about 18 or 19 minutes long, and so I think that's long enough. You get the idea. Sturgeon are fun to fish barb, but some days you don't catch any, and you just sit there and wait, and you just sit in your boat and wait. And other days, like yesterday, it was just constant bites and constantly reeling in fish. It was one fun day. The bigger ones sometimes take 40 minutes to land. <laughs> 